Alas kong mahal ang puso ko at buhay man sa iyo'y ibibigay tungkulin kong gagampanan na lagi kang paglingkuran ang laya mo'y papantayan Pilipinas kong hirap Ang bayan mo'y tanging ikaw Pilipinas kong mahal Ang puso ko at buhay man Sa iyo'y ibibigay Tungkolin kong gagampanan na lagi kang paglingkuran ang laya mo'y papantayan Pilipinas kong hirang ang laya mo'y papantayan Pilipinas kong Manag ng kaisipan at sa pagkakataon, maipagpatuloy ang pag-aaral ng mga kabataan. Gabay mo po ang bawat isa sa amin. Ano man ang bahagi na nagyagampanan, naway maging maayos at matagumpay ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral na aming gagawin sa araw ng ito. Patawarin mo po kami sa aming mga pagkulang at pagkakasala. At sa aming paggawa, ikaw po ang aming makasama. Amen. Good morning, Grade 6 learners. It is so nice to see you today. I am Teacher Charlotte and you are watching Valenzuela Facebook Live for English 6, Quarter 4. Today, we will talk about the most essential learning competency composed clear and coherent sentences using appropriate grammatical structure, subject-verb agreement with the code EN6G-1H-3.9. Before we proceed, please type in your name, the initials of your school, and your section in the comment box for your attendance. I will give you 30 seconds to do it and your timer starts now. All right, now that we are all set, get your paper and pen, sit up straight, listen attentively, and let us start our class for today. In this episode, we are going to discuss the rules that govern the use of subject and verb. Let us begin. I am going to show you pictures with sentences at the bottom of each image. One sentence is faulty and the other is correct. What you're going to do is to figure out which sentence is correct and hit the Facebook reaction that corresponds to your choice of sentence. Here it is. Number one, which sentence is correct? Hit like for COVID-19 threaten our health and heart for COVID-19 threatens our health. If you hit the heart reaction, then you are correct. COVID-19 threatens our health. 
Here comes number two. Hit like if your answer is, everybody is adjusting to the new normal. And heart if it is, everybody are adjusting to the new normal. If you hit the like button, good job! You are correct! Everybody is adjusting to the new normal. Here is our third set of sentences. Staying at home prevents the spread of the virus. And staying at home prevents the spread of the virus. Click the heart or like reaction now. That is right. Heart reaction has the correct sentence. Staying at home prevents the spread of the virus. For number four, hit that like button if it's frontliners deserve to be called heroes or that heart button if it's frontliners deserves to be called heroes. We are flooded with likes and you are doing amazing. Frontliners deserve to be called heroes is the correct answer. Last but not least, which is correct? After this pandemic awaits a new beginning or after this pandemic awaits a new beginning? Click that like or heart reaction now. If you hit that heart reaction, then you are correct. After this pandemic awaits a new beginning. You did great learners. Let us know your score by typing it in the comments section below. Thank you for participating in our warm-up activity. In our warm-up activity, we identified which sentence used the correct form of the verb. And today, we will get to know the rules in making the verb agree with its subject. First, let us remember what a subject and a verb is. A subject is the person or thing that, that is being discussed or described in the sentence. It is also the one that performs the action. Verbs, on the other hand, are words that show actions, motions, doing, or states of being. Subject-verb agreement simply means that subject and verb must agree in number. This means both need to be singular or both need to be plural. One important thing to remember is that unlike nouns, verbs have the S form of the word for the singular form and the base form for its plural form. For example, the base form of the verb study should be used with a plural subject, while its S form studies should be used with a singular subject. Let us use each in a sentence. Mario and his siblings study their lessons before the examination. Note that the subject in this sentence is plural, so the base form of the verb is used. Second, Mario studies his lesson before taking the examination. In this sentence, the S form of the verb is used because the subject is singular. Now that we are aware of this important reminder, let us get into the rules of subject-verb agreement. Rule number one, subjects and verbs must agree in number. The basic rule is that a singular subject takes a singular verb while a plural subject takes a plural verb. The verb must always agree with the subject of a sentence. Remember that verbs have the S form of the word for the singular form and the base form for its plural form. Example, the dog growls when he is angry. 
second sentence the dogs growl when they are angry in the first sentence we use the s form of the verb growls because our subject is dog which is singular in the second sentence since the subject became dogs we use the base form only of the verb growl here comes rule number two when sentences start with there or here the subject will always be placed after the verb example there is a problem with the papers you requested second here are papers here are the papers rather you requested in the first sentence the subject is problem and it came after the verb is while in the second one the subject papers came also after the verb are let's now proceed to rule number three if two subjects are joined by and they typically require a plural verb form for example the cow and pig are jumping over the moon let's have rule number four the verb is singular if the two subjects separated by and refer to the same person or thing for example red beans and rice is my mom's favorite dish red beans and rice refer only to one dish with red beans and rice as ingredient therefore it is taken as one and is considered singular we have now rule number five if one of the words each every or no comes before the subject the verb is singular for example no smoking or drinking is allowed smoking or drinking is considered singular since the word no comes before them we come now to rule number six if the subjects are both singular and are connected by the words or nor neither nor or either or and not only but also the verb is singular remember those words everyone for example neither jessica nor christian is to blame for the accident here we use the singular verb is because the subjects jessica and christian are connected by neither nor here comes rule number seven the singular verb form is usually used for units of measurement or time for example four quarts of oil was required to get the car running although four quarts seem to be plural it is considered singular in this sentence because it is a unit of measurement and with that the verb used to agree with it is the singular verb was let's now proceed to rule number eight singular and definite pronouns typically take singular verbs examples of singular and definite pronouns are flashed on the screen they are anyone everyone no one someone anybody and so much more here is an example sentence everybody wants to be loved in here since everybody is singular we used the s form of the verb wants take note also that we also have indefinite indefinite pronouns rather like few many several both all and some this kinds of indefinite pronouns always take the plural form for example 
few were left alive after the flood. Per is the plural verb used to agree with the subject that's used. We are getting nearer. Let's have rule number nine. Collective nouns like herd, senate, class, crowds, and many more usually take a singular verb form. For example, the crowd cheers for the winning team. The singular verb form cheers is used to agree with the collective noun crowd. Let's have rule number 10. Subjects don't always come before verbs in questions. Make sure you accurately identify the subject before deciding on the proper verb form to use. For example, where are the pieces of this puzzle? In this question, the verb used is are because the subject it describes is the plural word pieces and not the word puzzle. The verb also came first before the subject. Last but not least, here is rule number 11. Titles of books, movies, novels, and the like are treated as singular and take a singular verb. For example, the verbs is a movie starring Tom Hanks. The verbs, although it appears to be plural, is taken as singular because it is a title of a movie. That is why the verb used is the singular S. There you have the rules of subject-verb agreement. It might seem a lot right now, but with practice, it will soon be familiar to everyone of you. Have a practice activity. Complete the sentences by choosing the correct form of the verb that would agree with the underlined subject in each sentence. You can comment down your answers below. And since we have just celebrated the Philippines' 123rd Independence Day, our sentences are composed of the common Filipino proverbs translated in English. Let's begin. Number one. The truth black. Which is correct? Hurt or hurts? That's right. The correct answer is hurts. Let's have number two. Still waters blank deep. Which word is correct to be used? Run or run? Definitely. The correct answer is run since our subject in this sentence is the plural form. Is in the plural form. Number three. A man who blunk too much accomplishes little. Which word or verb is correct to be used? Talk or talks? Comment down your answers. That's right. The subject in this sentence is singular, so the correct answer is talk. Number four. An empty container blank a lot of noise. Make or make? You are doing great. The correct answer is make. Let's have number five. Nothing blank iron but its own corrosion. Which verb is correct to be used? Destroy or destroy? That is right. Nothing is a singular and definite pronoun, so the correct answer is destroy. Here comes number six. Opportunity only blank one. Grab it all your or you'll lose it. 
Knock or knock. Very good. The correct answer is not. Opportunity is a singular subject. Number seven. The early comer plans better than hard work. If or are. That is right. If is the correct answer. Let's have number eight. If someone blank stones at you, throw back bread. Which one should we use? Throw or throws? You remember it right. Someone is a singular indefinite pronoun and therefore must be used with a singular verb. The correct answer is? Throws. Let's have number nine. What good is a palace if only owls blank in it? Live or lives? The correct answer is live. Since our subject is the plural noun owl. Last but not least, a quitter never blank, a winner never quits. Is it win or wins? That is right. We have a singular subject, so the correct answer is wins. You did, you did amazing, learners. Let me know your score by typing it in the chat box below. To sum up our lesson for today, a subject is the person or thing that is being discussed or described in the sentence. It is also the one that performs the action. Verbs, on the other hand, are words that show actions, motions, doing, or state of being. Subject-verb agreement simply means that subject and verb must agree in number. This means both need to be singular or both need to be plural. One important thing to remember also is that unlike nouns, verbs have the S form of the word for the singular form and the base form for its plural form. It is helpful to be familiar with the rules of subject-verb agreement so that we can create sentences which are clear and cohesive. We are now on the part of the live stream where I will answer some of your questions. I will give you one minute to type in your questions in the comment box. Please do not ask questions that are not related to our topic for today. Your one minute starts now. <laughs> We are now going to read some questions from the comment box. I will try to answer them for you. Question number one. How do we form the singular and plural form of verbs? This is a very good question. The singular form of a verb is its S form, while its plural form is the base form. That also is the general rule of the subject-verb agreement. Let's have question number two. 
What is the difference between a subject and a verb? So the subject is usually a noun, a word or phrase that names a person, a place, or thing. The verb, on the other hand, identifies the action or the state of being. Let's have question number three. Should indefinite pronouns always be considered singular when used as subject? Wow, this is a great question. Going back to rule number eight, not all indefinite pronouns are singular. Some of them are plural, and so we have to be extra careful in identifying the subject first so we can also use the correct verb to agree with it. Thank you all for your participation and for raising your questions. Remember to never hesitate to raise your questions because learning starts in asking questions. May I remind you also that tomorrow you have a follow-up discussion with your English subject teacher. You can ask all your questions and clarify your ideas with them. So do not forget to attend online tomorrow. To all my fellow English teachers watching, if you want a copy of my PowerPoint presentation for this topic, you can download it using the link that you can see on the board. Just remember to use your deped.gov.ph email address to gain access to the file. I hope that you have enjoyed today's lesson. Next week will be another lesson with your new live streaming teacher. So stay tuned for the next live stream of the Valenzuela Live for English 6. Again, as our Secretary of Education, Leonor Briones mentioned, in any situation, learning must continue. Stay home, stay safe, and God bless us all. This is Teacher Charlotte, your live streaming teacher for Valenzuela Live English 6. Thank you and have a great day.